The finally keyword is just a little keyword you put after a try catch block and if you're confused about try catch or finally I'm gonna clear that up for you in this video it's really simple but first if you're new here my name is Alex Lee I post a Java tutorial on this channel just like this one every single week so if you might be interested in seeing that then consider subscribing so let's start learning about the finally keyword by just making a new Java project we'll call it finally together and then in there we'll throw a class call it finally we get to Learn, finally. <laughs> okay. Now we got our little class here, and it's looking pretty beautiful. So first, try, catch, and finally are all about exceptions. I do have an in-depth video about exceptions linked up on the screen now, but I'll show you um, just kind of a five-second overview of what an exception is. So an exception is like if the computer senses something is wrong and that it doesn't quite work, so if we try divide, to divide by zero, for example, if we have an integer a that's equal to five and an integer b that's equal to zero, and then we try to do c is equal to a over b, and we save and run this, we will get this red text that looks extremely scary and not fun. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so that we can see more of the text. So the first word here is exception. That means something went wrong. And then the exception is arithmetic exception divide by zero. It's just a message telling you what went wrong. There are all kinds of exceptions for all different reasons. A popular one is null pointer exception and they can kind of be tricky to mess with. So a try catch finally block looks like this. Try catch exception E, finally, boom. If you ever see like finally keyword or finally block, try block, catch block, that just means the code inside the curly braces. That is the block they're talking about. How this works is we try the code in here. If an exception happens, then we run the code in here. And at the end, we always run what's in here. So if we have an integer a that is equal to 5 over 0, which technically you can't do, and this will throw an exception. An exception is just a problem with your program that the computer's like, dude, what are you doing? So we create an exception here, which means we run code in here because the catch with an exception will run code in here. And for this example, we'll just print out that exception E because that's what it's named. And then finally, we'll run code in here. And for this example, we'll say, oops, this is in. Finally, it always gets run. Cool. Let's now save and run this. So what happens is we go into the main method because whenever we click the green run button, we hop into the main method. The first code we see is this try block or this try keyword and then code inside. We always run the try. And so we do int a equals five over zero. When this code is run, an exception is occurs. Usually it's called an exception is thrown, which is kind of the language, like it's thrown at you. And this catch block kind of catches that exception. It's just like little uh, computer slang. And so once this sees the exception, it's like, okay, I know what to do when an exception happens. I run this code. So we run this code and we print out E, which is the name of this exception object that it caught. And so what we do is we print out the exception here. And this is kind of the format when we print that exception object E. So we only technically like ran two lines of code, but in these little blocks. Next, this is done. We see finally, and finally means you always run it at the end. This is usually used for important things like closing objects that need to be closed so there's no memory leaks, um, just important stuff that you need to do. 
And I'll do an example of that after this. So finally, we see system.out.println. This isn't finally, it always gets run. And so that's why we see this is finally, it always gets run. Now let's do an example where maybe there's no exception that happens. Maybe we just do five over one. That's perfect. Let's save and run this and see what happens. We don't get the exception code now because no exception happened. But finally, it's still run because it always gets run. It's the final step. Finally, everything is done. Let's do this now. It's kind of like the cleanup. So now let's do an example of that cleanup. I'll just remove this so we have the bare bones. Now, why would you want to clean something up? Well, when we get into objects, some objects mess with the like machine level code and memory. And they require certain methods to be run after being used so that it closes correctly. For example, if we make a scanner object, just like any other object in Java, like this, and then we import that bad boy into our program, we pass in something to make the constructor work. This system.in is the console. So if we print out scan.next, what this does is it goes into the console. We create, we run the main method since we click the green run button. And the first code we see is we make a scanner object called scan that takes input from the console. So now we can write into the console and we'll say dogs. And, we, and then when we hit enter, this scan.next code is run which grabs the first word that we input and then prints it out. But there's this method called, if we do scan dot to bring up what that scanner can do, there's this one called close. And this says on the description to the right, it says closes this scanner. If the scanner has not yet been closed, then if it's underlying readable also implements blah, 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 basically, it's good practice to close it to make sure everything works properly. It's best practice to close it just in case. This is kind of the cleanup method for the scanner. So we would do scan.close, save and run, dogs, and we'll do cats this time, cats. And we just make sure everything works by calling the, the close code inside of the close method. So let's put that into this beautiful try catch finally. And the reason um, nothing happened after we did this is because there's no code in here. So we can just keep this up here. We will try to get input from the user. We will catch an exception and print out the exception. And then we will close it in the finally block, which always gets run just to ensure that the cleanup code is always run. So if we save and run this, then we could do something like thanks. It prints thanks, and then it runs the clo close method. And again, this is just a simple example just to try to show you how try catch finally works. You can obviously put as much code as you want in here. You can even catch different types of exceptions. So you could say null pointer exception, and that'll catch the null pointer exceptions. You can stack multiple of these. So you can catch a null pointer exception here and run certain code for the null pointer exception. Or you could also catch the general exception or an array index out of bounds exception. It's all completely up to you. And then the finally will just always get run. And it's used mostly to run important things that need to be run that are built in to methods that the object you're using has. I hope that makes sense. I hope you learned something. I hope this clears up any confusion you had. I hope it was easier than trying to learn from a website. But thank you for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.